Hi, so apparently the um, current government in the Netherlands wants to build two additional nuclear reactors. A plan that has been sitting on the table since the second power plant of the Netherlands, Borsela, was ready to be decommissioned. Its use term has been extended multiple times as it's pretty old. Apparently, Poland and France are also really considering nuclear power now in order to replace old coal, gas and oil power plants. Now I'm going to talk about why that is absolutely necessary as well as some obstacles to overcome. So I'm going to basically uh, split this into three main parts. First of all is what is nuclear energy and what is its advantages. Second of all is again certain disadvantages and obstacles that we have to overcome before we get a couple extra functional nuclear power plants. And third of all are some really interesting developments happening in the world of nuclear. First of all, what exactly is defined as nuclear power? In the modern sense of the world, I'm going to be talking about power that has been generated by the fission of atoms like uranium and thorium. Nuclear fusion, though it is superior to nuclear fission in many senses of the word, is so expensive it's unlikely to come to fruition in the near future when right mother of <coughs> now there is a climate crisis, rising energy prices and our natural gas supplies, though having been moved away from Russia are actually now coming from another country that doesn't have human rights high up its sleeves, Qatar. Anyway, for us to transition away from coal, oil and gas, we absolutely need a mixed energy supply system that combines multiple sources of energy into one power grid. A large part of this uh, system comprises of solar, wind and gravitational hydropower being backed by a storage system based on pump storage hydropower and other alternatives to lithium batteries. But there is still going to be about 50% which cannot be produced this way, nor do we want to, due to um, stability issues on the grid. The only known sustainable energy source that is not dependent on weather or water levels is nuclear power, which is why it's so often talked about in many countries' politics. But then how easy is it really to get our coal power plants closed and replaced with nuclear power plants? Well, it's not going to be very easy due to the problems related to cost and public opinion. In fact, that latter one is the reason why Germany closed all its nuclear power plants. Some people think that nuclear power is extremely unsafe, but that has really been exaggerated, perhaps even deliberately fabricated by oil industry. There were only a couple of high casualty, high damage nuclear disasters. Uh, the first one of which that was well known was the Three Mile Island incident in the US back in 1979. This was caused by in the primary cooling circuit of one of the reactors which caused the coolant water to rise so much in temperature that it automatically stopped. However, the temperature was uh, still rising due to decay and that caused water pressure to rise so much that it ended up opening a safety valve and losing the primary coolant. This disaster was caused perhaps by an inadequate safety regulation that was promptly adjusted based partly on the uh, theory of system accidents developed by Charles Sperov. Then we had another nuclear disaster which became very well known and in fact part of the reason why Germany shut down their nuclear plants. That was Chernobyl. Uh, this nuclear power plant is so well known that I'm really only going to explain some of the basics under which it happened. Effectively, what happened was there was the uh, nuclear power plant which used an RBMK-1000 reactor which was inherently inferior to Western designs. And in addition, uh, there was a very weird kind of test of safety systems that was initially planned for the day shift but got transposed onto the night shift due to a power outage in another power plant. The night staff was unable, I mean incompetent, to do the test and to put it bluntly due to a combination of design flaws and human errors the reactor ended up heating up so much and started producing so little power that the uh, 
operators decided to perform an emergency stop which due to a design flaw in the control rods caused the temperature to uh, rise even further and so did the output power which caused the reactor to eventually explode and release radioactive rain everywhere in Europe. This is a very particular type of disaster that could no longer happen ever again in any developed country as even the Soviet Union and the later Russian Federation and other successor states of the Soviet Union ended up replacing the RBMK-1000 reactors with more modernized versions. And then on to the last of the nuclear disasters, which was Fukushima. Fukushima was otherwise a perfectly normal, perfectly well-functioning nuclear power plant on the Japanese coast where earthquakes tended to happen. That was why Japanese cities ended up installing wave barriers on their coast and Fukushima did that as well. Fukushima however had a wave barrier that according to uh, historical and geological data couldn't really uh, hold back the worst of the worst earthquakes that happened in the region which was a magnitude 9 earthquake, the Tohoku was the latest one of them. This one ended up wrecking the plant completely. Water flooded into the basements where the emergency generators were stationed, which turned on immediately after the power outage that was caused by the tsunami. And the tsunami itself caused many people to uh, die, get injured or go missing due to the rampage of broken buildings and general flooding. However, the Fukushima nuclear power plant apparently only had one on its death toll, and that's it. And we've got to be aware, when it comes to nuclear power, safety regulations were partly written in blood. These nuclear disasters, along with a couple of us that aren't that well known, formed the foundation of very strict, very hard to adhere to safety regulations, and for a good reason, which we don't see in coal power plants, for example. Uh, coal mining is infamous for being an extremely dangerous activity. There can be literal fires that devastate areas underground, changing geological landscapes forever and making entire regions uninhabitable. And it's all the worse when coal is mined from the surface, like what happens now in Germany. You get multiple wastelands caused by underground fires and surface mining together that end up becoming orders of magnitude larger than the entire Chernobyl exclusion zone. And unlike the exclusion zone, continue to grow if we continue to use coal and oil and gas power. Not to mention the many ecological disasters and here we go, the risk of flooding. And when it comes to the nuclear waste though, that's another problem. But we know it's a problem. We have to find out uh, permanent and temporary storage that is geologically stable as it's called and that's very hard especially if we build a lot of extra nuclear power plants though coal mining also generates a lot of radioactive waste and we don't recognize that as a problem and just dump it in the open why the <coughs> do we treat these as separate is it the <coughs> uh, fossil fuel industry but storing nuclear waste long term is by no means impossible if we know where to do it. For example, in New Mexico, in the waste isolation pilot plant near Yucca Mountain. Uh, and it's generally better off than having to deal with a bunch of climate catastrophes. So these kinds of uh, safety regulations are very expensive to adhere to by countries though. In the Netherlands, according to um, WISE, a environmental organization, a nuclear power plant costs at least $10 million and they often go over budget. Imagine that for four standard nuclear power plants, or even two of them. Where do you get that money from and will it actually make our electricity cheaper? Those are the two master questions we must answer, along with, you know, where do you put these things so that they're relatively safe from floods, earthquakes and other types of natural disasters. Uh, this is a major obstacle to overcome, especially as due to a public fear of nuclear power plants. Many uh, investment companies don't want to invest in nuclear power plants. But there is something really interesting coming along the way of nuclear fission energy, namely a new type of nuclear reactor. Of course, I'm talking about the 
liquid salt reactor, molten salt reactor, liquid fuel thorium reactor, and the many names this type of system comes from. It works completely different from a regular nuclear reactor by instead of having water as a coolant, having a salt be the coolant that is also atomically bonded somehow with the fuel, uranium or thorium, with thorium being again more abundant and easier to burn by this type of reactor. The major advantages being that it is a bit cheaper, especially in land acquisition, though initial research is needed. In addition, these are intrinsically safe as the salt simply expands under the events in which a standard nuclear reactor produces an explosion or a meltdown. And finally, especially when used in combination with thorium, this nuclear reactor type produces very little radioactive waste. It will produce quite a substantial amount, but way less than a standard reactor would. So even though these uh, still won't create 100% of our energy needs, even if we cut back on that, I do hope that this energy matures to a point that many more major cities in the Netherlands and across the world can have their own safe nuclear reactor, preferably with a bit of a construction that allows citizens of that particular area to receive part of the earnings produced by the reactor. Anyway, see you next time. Bye bye. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, please give a thumbs up and share this video with all your friends and perhaps consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you and I'll see you next time.